those outside of graffiti, the activity always seems mysterious, a bit weird, kind of pointless at times, and it's often hard to find accurate information if you're outside of the culture or you know no one that does it. And so a lot of stereotypes start to form, and a lot of those stereotypes are understandably negative. People are vandalizing stuff, so you know all these wild stories come out about the type of people and the reasons for doing that activity. But as an actual graffiti writer, we know that a lot of them can be known as misconceptions. So here are five misconceptions about graffiti. And no, I'm not talking about Banksy and that street art kind of stuff. I'm talking about the graffiti that pisses you off on your way to work because some dickhead has spray painted the train window and now you can't see outside that type of graffiti so if you're new to it here are five misconceptions if you're obviously part of the culture maybe something obvious for you to think about the first misconception is that all graffiti writers are social activists and people that are outside of graffiti always think that because people are doing rebellious stuff like going around and vandalizing things that they must be trying to enact some change in the world that they're anti the government they want to see shifts in authority and they're some creating some kind of anarchy but for 99% of the writers that kind of higher level thinking and like consequences of what they're doing they don't really care about they're just there to have fun it's fun to go out and be on these missions to have people recognize your work and just challenge yourself with how good you can do your own graffiti and that's the main motivation there's no other illusions about enacting any social political ideological change in the world in fact if you tell another graffiti writer that that's your main kind of objective that you want to uproot the government through your graffiti they're most likely just going to sigh and be like uh all right bro cool I think a lot of those misconceptions stem from street art, you know, people like Banksy, when others think of that, he's always trying to convey some sort of message through his work, but that's not really the same for graffiti. And I guess on the other end of the spectrum is the misconception that graffiti is mindless, that there's no planning or preparation that goes behind any of this, that it's just done willy-nilly with a blank mind, you go out and spray some stuff. And in some cases that is the case and that's part of the fun of it, but a lot of the kind of better stuff that you're seeing on trains, on rooftops, the bigger productions, there's a lot of planning, organization, research that goes into it before anything illegal is ever done. Just so that when the final outcome is seen by the public, that's why it looks so good because they've put in so many hours of thinking about it, knowing where to run, picking out the colors, developing their style. There's a lot that goes into it behind the scenes that people might not see on the surface. They might see, you know, a bunch of 14 year olds tagging a bus stop and be like, yep, this is how all of graffiti is, just some mindless activity. But on the higher end of the spectrum, a lot of planning, a lot of development goes into it that no one really sees. Another misconception is that all graffiti writers are affiliated with gangs, and don't get me wrong, some graffiti writers are actually affiliated with legitimate gangs, but when the media or graffiti writers throw around the word gang, it's not really gang in the traditional sense. It's more just like a bunch of writers that get together under the one name and go out and spray paint together. That's it. It's a crew, it's a group, it's a bunch of the lads that like spray painting together. That's all you can think of it. All the usual connotations of the word gang, like violence, robbery, drug dealing, a lot of that is non-existent when you're talking about a graffiti gang. And to go along with that is the misconception that graffiti is territorial. I think people have been playing too much GTA San Andreas and think that if you go paint another person's area, they're going to come over to your area and start to bash you up or shoot you out or something like that and that's not really the case for graffiti nowadays people paint in different areas and on different lines all the time and in fact the whole idea of being all city means you have to branch out and paint all city so graffiti writers kind of understand this and don't get too butthurt if someone goes and paints in their suburb of course sometimes there's some protectiveness there's always kind of someone saying oh locals only can paint here but the whole like idea of being territorial isn't really the case for graffiti. The idea of being territorial might come into play when you're talking about a specific spot where people paint trains or something like that and then another group of writers comes in and starts using it. Then there might be a bit of argument between the two but the, the main idea of I'm living in the east and I can't paint in the west doesn't really exist in graffiti, at least where I come from. I'm sure around the world there are some places where that happens but for the most part I don't think that's really a factor. Another misconception is that graffiti writers are unapproachable. And this comes from the stereotype that graffiti itself is a byproduct of the ghetto. 
and the main attitude towards people that come from those poorer neighborhoods is that they're thought of as kind of violent, delinquents, uneducated, you know, criminals. That's just the stereotype, not the truth, but the stereotype, you have to admit. So that's the reason people think that, you know, graffiti being a byproduct of that place, the people doing it are those type of people. But nowadays, and to some extent, even back then, Graffiti was always inclusive of people from many different social backgrounds. It was just so easy and accessible to do that it didn't matter if you were rich or poor or from whatever race, you could easily pick up and do graffiti as a tool of expression. And so to say that all graffiti writers are one particular person and they're all coming from one particular place and they all act a certain way is kind of unfair. There's so many people getting into graffiti nowadays from so many different backgrounds that to say that they're all like rough and rugged is not exactly the case. You have the people that are into it because of the art side of things. Then you might have a college kid, a private school kid, skaters, emo people, tattoo guys, um, graphic design guys who have their own company but still enjoy doing graffiti because that's what they grew up doing. The boys that like to go to the pub and get a few tags after. I could go on like forever but there's so many people that to think that if you go up to any of them and they'll all just be super violent, super nasty, just turn on you immediately and you can't have a valid and informative and interesting conversation with any of them is kind of unfair and kind of a misconception about the people behind graffiti rather than graffiti itself as well. So thanks for watching guys, there are so many other more intricate kind of misconceptions that I've missed here and I couldn't have time to think about and talk about, um, but the ones that I've named are kind of the more broader, bigger picture kind of things that I could think of. So let me know in the comments below any kind of other ones that I might have missed or any interesting ones that you could think of. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thanks for watching the video and sticking around to the end. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Go ahead and follow the Graph Lounge on Instagram if you feel like it and like and leave a comment as well and thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video peace out